Today, we're welcoming back Eric Foster for another update on bank transactions. He was on the show a few weeks ago to provide an update on bulk and inline reclassification. On this episode, we'll be hearing about items and sales receipts and joined by ProAdvisor correspondents Dan Luthi and Carla Caldwell. Hey, Pro Advisors, I'm Jacqueline, and you're watching In The Know. It's the show designed to keep you in the know on the most exciting updates to QuickBooks Online. So here's the scoop. We heard that you have to spend lots of time adding transactions from the bank feed and then going back to fix them later because the bank feed hasn't historically allowed for adding items like products or services to transactions. So here's what we've done. On money out transactions, you can now add products or services, also known as items, to your expense transactions directly from the bank feed. And on money in transactions, you can now record transactions as sales receipts directly from the bank feed. And now for the fast facts. All users on Plus and Advance can add items on expense transactions. And on sales receipts, it's available to all users on all SKUs with the exception of Ledger. To access these updates, simply visit the banking page. Items and sales receipts on bank transactions is available to about 50% of all customers across all regions, with more to come later this summer. If you find this update interesting or helpful, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Eric, welcome back. It's so nice to have you on the show again. Can you take us for another spin? Well, it's great to be back. Thanks for having me on the show again, Jacqueline. So I'm excited to talk to you about items and sales receipts on bank transactions. My name's Eric. I'm a product manager working on the bank feed. I'll start with the money in use case. So you can see here, uh, let's say I'm selling something through Shopify. And we do have a Shopify integration, but if you've got the transaction coming in through the bank feed, then now what you can do is you can select a product or service right here. This isn't something that you could do before. Let's say I sold toys. And now you can see this transaction is a sales receipt instead of a bank deposit. And so then when I hit add on that transaction, it immediately adds it to my books as a sales receipt with that product or service. And if I click right here, then I can see that sales receipt transaction. On the money outside, we you can now add a product or service right there. And so now the expense is recorded with a product or service, but I can also do both. So let's say I bought plastic bags in this case, but there was also a shipping fee. And I want to use an account for my chart of accounts shipping to keep track of the shipping. But then for the item itself, I want to use the product or service. So then I can split the transaction between both of those to have more granularity about what exactly I purchased. And this is really helpful again for job costing as you're trying to keep track of exactly uh, what you spent money on. One thing that we're really excited is coming soon is credit card credits. So if you buy something with your credit card, and then you return it, then after you record the initial purchase this way, you'll also be able to record the return this way so that the two entries zero each other out. And that's all. Uh, so we're really excited about this. We've been hearing feedback for years from people asking about it. And we've already heard a lot from people who've been trying it out. So that we hope that you're able to try it out as well and let us know what you think. Uh, so thank you again for having me on the show and really excited to uh, see more of you using this feature in the future. Awesome, Eric, thank you so much, that's great. We'll turn now to ProAdvisor correspondents Carla Caldwell and Dan Luthi for them to weigh in. Carla, Dan, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of In The Know. It's awesome to have you here. Carla, let's start with you. Tell me, why is this update such a big deal? Well, I actually think on the sales side, this is going to be a real big time saver for our nonprofit clients as they book donations that are coming in. They don't know about them ahead of time. so. Recording a sales receipt or an invoice doesn't really make sense ahead of time. So once it comes in and it's deposited, they can immediately record it and use an item code, which really does help a lot with reporting. So that is really exciting um, for those clients. And we work with quite a few nonprofits. So I think that's going to help them out. But I think on the con on the expense side, our construction clients are really going to enjoy that there where they can record items on the expenses that they buy. So they buy lumber and they can use that code. And, and I think that's going to help streamline what they do on a day-to-day -day basis as well. The part that I love about that you mentioned about the deposit side of it is one of the things we see very common with using third-party merchant systems is actually merchant fees that come mm -hmm. out of as a part of it too. And so now you're going to actually be able to record the revenue and the merchant fee as a part of the same transaction. And so it ties perfectly. You get the full uh, you know revenue numbers that are listed, plus you also get the expense associated with it. So that's going to help a lot. Uh, I also think on the e-commerce side, which I think is really convenient here, is you now actually can 
more or less receive inventory items in the bank feed. So whereas historically you may have created a PO or you may have entered a bill with all of the item level information and shipping and all that other kind of stuff, you can do it as of this point in time, right within the bank feed, which is going to be able to help just streamline right. the process yeah, and save you a bunch of time. Yeah, the expense side of the transaction really can help. We have a very specific way that we record certain things and allow reporting for our construction clients. So this is going to really tie that in. Before, it felt a little bit time consuming for some of them to enter in the transaction separately and then it clears and then they're clearing, you know, they're matching it up to the cleared transaction on, on the bank feed. This just makes it a one less step that they have to do, which might make it more accurate. <laughs> so we'll see how it all goes. Well, it's going to speed up the process, right? Like it's going to make it faster for your construction clients that maybe aren't buying 12,000 different things within a line item. But if they're doing, you know, if it's a smaller construction client that's buying materials for one event or one build, they can put all that in as construction materials. And then when they sell it, it'll come out very, very cleanly. Yep, exactly. So Carla, you brought up an important word, which is reporting. Does this enable cleaner or better reporting for your clients? Yeah. I mean, they, they would have gotten there, but it would have just taken them longer, right? Because they had to put it in first and then do this. But especially, I think especially for me, as I'm thinking through some of these things, our nonprofit clients will really like this because we want them using sales receipts because we want the items to be able to know the types of things that they're selling as nonprofits. But even on the expense side, because we have a lot of clients that are using projects for their construction, this is going to help out a lot there as well and provide those reports that they want that are a little bit more granular so our chart of accounts doesn't explode. We're putting them on items and then that goes to the chart of accounts and their financial statements in a little more summarized form. So the reports will definitely be improved. Well, and I, I love that you mentioned that, Carla, because I think along with this too, one of the parts that historically people have tried to, to use as the chart of accounts as the example to break out all the revenue and all the expense categories, or they build classes or locations and things of that nature. And now you're going to be able to organize all of those a little bit more seamlessly and have additional dimensions because when the deposits or expenses are coming out and you're coding them through the bank feed, you can actually associate it to that sub-level detail. And so you can drill into them a little bit further. You can find timelines of those types of things. And so you're not, and again, to that same point from before, you're not having to go in and add bills and individual sales receipts for everything and try to match it up. And so when you don't have all that information at your fingertips weeks before, or sometimes even days before, it, it allows you to be able to just move through it a little bit more fluidly and not have to have three or four extra steps. Well, this is this is a conversation that I have with pro advisors all the time. We can use QuickBooks online to get us more information rather than solely relying on the financial statements mm -hmm. so that we can help our client with their operational reporting and their operation mm -hmm. management. That That's where it gets really fun to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can get the financials out. We'll still get there. But now we have a little bit more information to give our clients inside of those more detailed reports that we get from products and services. So I actually think it's going to be a really great conversation to have with clients. Oh, very much agree with you. Yep. So Carla, in the instance where your client is actually taking the, act the action on bank transactions and you hear about an exciting mm -hmm. update like this, how would you then train your client on the updated workflow? or even just get the word out to them? Well, we do send newsletters out to our clients, but we also will create a video for our clients. Um, usually it's me because my team's like, I don't want to be on video, Carla, you do it. Oh. So I'll record a quick little video. We have a sample company and we'll walk through the process and show our clients how to use that and ask them to connect with our team members. And of course, we let our team members know, hey, we're going to be sending this out. Maybe you need to bring it up where we know that this makes sense for them to implement this. So we try to do it on both sides of it. Client reach out to us and team member reach out to client and they get this little video. So that that's one of the ways that we do it. Yeah. We start with internal training first on our side. So very similar with that, but we start with the team. So they understand if a client's already seeing it because they got a notification through a QBO or something else like that, um, it allows us to be more proactive in the conversation um, instead of reactive. And then if necessary, we do definitely do the same where we send out a bulk notification to all of our clients so that they're best prepared for it. I love that. Amazing pro tips, especially, of course, love the idea for a video naturally. Dan, Carla, thank you so much, as always, for being on the show. It's always so much fun to spend time with you. So appreciate your time and insight. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Thank you so much.
Hi. And thank you for watching this episode. I'm Jacqueline, the host of In The Know and leader of ProAdvisor training and certification. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. We'll catch you next time.